Shalom, well, brothers and sisters. Welcome to this week's Sabbath service. We're going to start by reading a scripture, and that scripture is in the Book of Mormon. We're going to go to Moroni 7, 11 RAV, 7, 13 OPV. And for those that aren't familiar, RAV is the Community of Christ or RLDS Traditions version of the Book of Mormon, and the OPV is the Orson Pratt version that the Brighamites use came out of the Salt Lake City Church. Behold, that which is of God inviteth and enticeth to do good continually. Wherefore, everything which inviteth and enticeth to do good and to love God and to serve him is inspired of God. As far as announcements go, I would like to remind you that we are having our Priesthood 101 class. It's being taught by our head evangelist, Alan. Every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can find that on our calendar. You'll find all the events I'm about to talk about on our calendar at calendar.cjccf.org, or you can just go to the website and click on the calendar link at the top of the menu. If you would like to receive a certificate, you will need to register for this second class, and you'll need to turn in all of your homework, and that will allow us to grant you a certificate. Right now we have about 14 people, I believe, taking the class, but there is still room for more. And the first week is, it was really the introduction. So if you're able to stop in on this, you know, second class, you're not really going to be missing out too much. We did record the first class for any that are joining then. But beyond this, uh, the, the recordings will not be made public. And if you want to attend after that we definitely encourage you to come you will be attending as an observer and not as a student because we don't want to get you too far behind and we don't want to overwhelm alan with a lot of extra homework to grade and i should clarify that by grade i mean these are you sharing your thoughts on things and he reads over them and then shares his thoughts back on them and offers support this is a either you take the course or you don't this isn't like a Thing we're going to be grading you on. <clears throat> so that said, the second announcement is a reminder that we still are having our Thursday meetings at 8.30, half hour later, uh, at Eastern Standard Time, every Thursday, and all are invited to come. Right now we are discussing conference, and we are discussing these Sabbath services and other things, but once we're done going over business, we open the floor and just chat about, you know, whatever topics, usually gospel topics. But, uh, yeah, so if you want to come and fellowship with saints, please, please come. If you can't and you'd like to learn more about the fellowship, you can reach out info at cjccf.org. And either Alan or myself or another one of our evangelists will reach out to you to discuss whatever it is you'd like to talk about, answer your questions, etc. Very soon, we'll be having our Temple Committee meeting. We have that every first Saturday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. Again, all are invited. And the reason why we do that one on Saturday at noon is because we're trying to use it time, hold this at a time when people all around the world are able to attend and get more people to, to show up, basically. Uh, if you would like to be a part of the Temple Committee or you'd like to discuss other business or learn more about what we're doing as we move forward, this is a great meeting to come to. We do, we talk a little bit more than just the temple, but the temple is the main focus. And we are having a somewhat informal sacrament meeting in person April 1st, Saturday in Nashville, and that's on the calendar also. So if you'd like to attend, it's going to be more of a meet and greet. There's not going to be any talks or messages or anything like that. It's going to be us showing up at this church. Uh, it's an independent Catholic church that's allowed us to meet in their building. We will have a sacred communion, but basically the bottom line is it's just a meet and greet. We, we don't want people to think that this is going to be a big service. In the summer, in either uh, late June or late July, mid to late, I should say, we are going to be holding, and we're figuring out that date um, at the next Temple Committee meeting, an actual like weekend retreat type thing. It's something where you'll be able to get a hotel. You'll, you'll have to pay for it yourself, of course, or go camping. And we'll be meeting in Nashville. We'll be doing baptisms on Sunday. And on Saturday, we'll be ordaining those that took this class, taking the Priesthood 101 class. 
and we will be offering the temple endowments. Uh, the first endowment, you said, we'll be doing the initiatories and the first endowment. We do our endowments in stages. So a lot of stuff going on. I know that was a lot of announcements. I'm really excited about all this. I hope you are too. I'm really hoping to see lots of people there over the summer and getting to know people in person. As far as prayer requests, last week I mentioned that we only had one person left that I was aware of that was looking for a job. Well, I want to let you know that she did obtain the job and it looks like it's going to be very well suited to meet the needs of her family. So very excited there. Uh, please make sure to, in, in our prayers, thank the Lord for this blessing for this family. We have another brother who broke his knee and he is going to be, well, he's not losing his job, but he can't work for three months. We do not have the financial resources to help in times like this. Unfortunately, we just don't have that kind of money flowing in. But we can pray for these brothers and sisters that are sick and afflicted. And he is definitely afflicted. And, and it's going to be putting a little bit of a burden on his family. So please pray for him. If there is a GoFundMe or anything, I will let you know in the future. But for right now, at this point, it's just we can pray for this, this family. There's another brother who is also looking for a job currently. And we thought he was going to be getting a job, so I didn't mention him last week. But it looks like they're kind of dangling the carrot without going anywhere right now. So we need your prayers for this brother that he will be able to get, whether it's the Lord wants him at this job or something else, he'll be able to find the place the Lord needs him to be that will meet the needs of his family and be something that he enjoys doing. I have not talked to many people, any people actually this week, that are sick other than the afflicted brother. So I would say... Let's just make sure to pray for the sick and the afflicted. COVID hasn't really gone away. I know we've forgotten about it because of the vaccine. We've been able to go back to normal. Very thankful for that, obviously. But it doesn't mean that people aren't getting it because it isn't a traditional vaccine. What the vaccine does, as most people know, is it just trains your body on how to fight COVID, whereas before it didn't know what to do. And so just people were dying right and left. So... COVID is still out there, and there are still a lot. There are people that can't take the vaccine for their own health reasons. They have their own specific reasons why they can't, and that, that's completely understandable. But then there's also been a lot of, of fake news out there, um, false reports, tricking people into believing that the vaccine is going to turn people into zombies and just all kinds of ridiculousness. It's somehow unhealthy for you. Or that COVID actually isn't as bad as people think it is. And so because of that, there are still people that are not only getting COVID, but allowing COVID to evolve and get worse. And so we have to have to keep making more and more vaccines. And because for the same reason we got COVID everywhere all at once, globalization, there is a lot of fear of other worse viruses popping up. So we always need to be vigilant and mindful to thank God for the blessings that he has bestowed upon us to the scientists to give us vaccines and ways around these things and ways to prevent these things. And at the same time, we also need to ask for protection that we'll be safe when these infections come. And we need to pray for these brothers and sisters that have been lied to and have been convinced that they shouldn't take vaccines for ludicrous reasons. Everyone has a free agency, and we can't tell people what to think or what to do. We can't, however, pray for, for everyone that they won't get it in the first place, and that if they do, it won't leave them as something evolved into even something even worse. We can still pray for them when they get sick. We can still love them, because they're not our enemies. If you want to say, you know, call someone out as an enemy. It's the people who make up these ridiculous lies. But as we know, the Lord told us to love our enemies. So we need to even pray for these people who are just despitefully using these poor brothers and sisters out there that refuse to get vaccinated because of these very, very damaging lies. We need to pray for them, let them know that God loves them, that we love them, and Pray that, that their hearts will be changed, that they can repent. 
whether they choose to repent or not is up to them. But as the Gospel of John, first chapter says, the darkness cannot comprehend the light. So all we can do is pray and love them. I know this has been a long series of prayer requests and announcements. Let's go ahead and pause now and sing an opening hymn if you like and say an opening prayer and we'll be here when you get back. Now for the unity portion of our service, we're going to recite the Shema together. I'm going to read it in Hebrew first, and then I'm going to read it in English. This is Deuteronomy 6.4, in case you'd like to look it up. And this is my translation of that particular verse. And then there will be a long pause in the video so that we all can read that back together as one, as we fellowship together, wherever we are and whenever we're watching this video. Shema Yisrael, Yavah Elohenu. Yavah Echad. Hero Israel, Yavah is our Elohim. Yavah is unity. We will now have a message from Brother James Piper. Hello, everybody. I'm James Piper. I'm uh, giving you the message today. Um, this is. Uh, different than what I usually do. I usually go out in a garage, in the most holy garage on the planet. But today it's just too cold and I was short on time and I'm and here we are in our 12 by 12 bunker instead. So um, today's message is, uh, the theme is, do good continually. Do good continually. Yes. Okay. So on Moroni uh, chapter 7 verse 11 in RAV or Moroni verses, uh, chapter 7, verse 13 in the OPV, it says, Behold, that which is of God inviteth and enticeth to do good continually. Therefore, everything which inviteth and enticeth to, to good and to love God and to serve him is inspired by God. Okay, so I'm sure every single person that's watching this video um, does something good for somebody most of the time once a day depending on what you're doing that day even if it's just doing your job even if you're um, making a difference in someone's life to to get to a goal or to some kind of outcome you're making someone's life easier and you may not even know it by just doing your job let's say you don't work or you're just a member of a community. Your smile and your service to others are also inspired by God. Even just bearing each other's burdens or being a good friend is, is something inspired too. Because we're all here on the planet and we're trying to get by as best as we can. And life is hard enough to do it alone or to um, have more difficulties. So whatever you can do to make someone's life better... This is the kind of the theme for today. So one one thing I want to always discuss is 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 the fact that um, that we need to allow people to be who they are. As humans, we come from all sorts of traditions and backgrounds. We may not like what our neighbor does or their beliefs, but we allow them the common courtesy that we would want. Nobody wants to be harassed by. Um, their beliefs, their beliefs are different than yours. And it doesn't matter if you even go to the same church, even churches that have a little more unilateral belief systems, there's going to be someone who's going to, that's going to feel different about something than you. And that's never good to make their life harder because you disagree with them. We, we have this all over the world where we have people that, that force their beliefs to others. And, and uh, that's not the way to go. And so let's just put all that aside and just let's just think about a world where where we can be with our brothers and sisters in Christ um, in peace and harmony and we let people be how they are where we that is a basic human function is to be good and unfortunately in this uh, in this day and age 
Um, people forget that. Goes on to say um, in Romans 12, verses 15 through 18, it says, Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one with evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peacefully with all. Is that right there in Romans? Let's live peacefully with all. So sometimes we, uh, in our quest of being um, of being good, we are asked to serve in ways that are unexpected, because God has called us to do that. Pe God doesn't call people that are better than anybody else. Just like your your boss wants you to do something, or your friend, or your 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 uh, spouse. Um, sometimes we do favors for people. They need us in certain areas. So, we are enticed to serve others by God. In, uh, in my community, I serve in a struggling church that sometimes puts me at odds with those on the national level, especially online. I'm kind of the guy that shows up at a Facebook group and people just kind of shrug their shoulders and say, yeah, there's that guy again. So um, so it's hard to, to serve in a church like that, that, that you're just constantly have people at odds with you or, or, or just have different belief systems. But you know what? We put those aside because people are people and people need to... Um, hear what I have to say, and I need to hear what they have to say, too. So, anyways, um, God called me to the vin to a vineyard. I call a vineyard. It's a, it's a small congregation. They were about to close. They were going to close their doors, and that community is going was more than likely going to lose a church because it sits on land that probably would be redeveloped. So, I don't know exactly why God sent me there. Uh, to spend so much time and, and effort. But I have a testimony that my calling to that vineyard was a personal request from God. Um, with that said, that doesn't mean that I can't work in other vineyards to, um, to help other people, to uh, maybe inspire others to, to, to help in, in unexpected ways. So that's one of the nice things about the fellowship. The fellowship allows me to um, help locally too in, in, a, in a struggling congregation. So I learn stuff from them. I bring stuff from them into the fellowship. I learn stuff at the fellowship and I bring it to them. It's, it's, a, it's a great system that we have. So, um, so the fellowship embraces that local mission. Um, so the mission is, is to bring uh, Jesus Christ and community to those who are searching. Um, so if somebody's looking for a uh, church or, or any kind of group or community, um, it doesn't have to be my group. But if I inspire someone to go search, that's that's great. So and then, and then one thing I've learned is, is, is when I reconnected with Jesus Christ, I also reconnected with that still small voice. And, and then that still small voice inspires me to help others in, in their journey. So you hope that whoever you help also inspires someone else to help someone else get to know Jesus and get to know God. That cycle of goodness and service and inspiration continues to grow and enhances the whole world, our whole community. It sometimes just takes one person um, to to inspire someone to to do good so in closing i'm going to ask you something um that should be natural but again in today's society it's not natural as as much as it used to be so we need to be good humans to each other 
We need to be slow to judge others. Let people be how they be. Don't try to force change and, and be patient and, and also be patient with others and love enough one another as brothers and sisters. We are brothers and sisters, even the ones that we don't agree with or the ones that don't like us. Um, let's, let's try peaceful coexistence. Grace, love, and acceptance for all. The world will be a better place if we give uh, peace a chance to flourish. We can be enticed by the Spirit to make someone's day, even just the smallest ways. Invite the Spirit in your life. And I testify that you will never regret doing that. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, we welcome all present to Christ's table. We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament, a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenants and recommit together to His mission, to grow closer to Jesus Christ, as individuals and as a community, worshiping Jesus Christ through God's Word, the sacraments, ministry, outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly. O God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of Thy Son, and witness unto Thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of Thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments which he hath given them, that they may always have his spirit to be with them. Amen. O God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do so in remembrance of the blood of thy Son, which was shed for them, that they may witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember him, that they may have his spirit to be with them. Amen. I want to thank all of you for coming today and when, whatever day it is and, and worshiping with us. We're very thankful to have this opportunity to create these videos for you. If this video has helped you in any way, we would encourage you to follow our channel, like the video, share the video, so that the gospel of Jesus Christ can be spread throughout the world. This is how we're doing. Our movement is online right now. And I would like to remind you that we are still looking for more people for the temple, I'm sorry, not temple, the uh, Sabbath Services Committee, this committee. I'd like to get to a point to where I'm able to move away from this and let the people that the Lord has called to run the church portion of this movement to just take charge and, and, and be there to do this. So if you feel called, we need people to edit the videos. We need people to share messages, say closing prayers. We need people to rotate. And we really need a brother and a sister, priest and priestess, to run this, to take charge of it. So right now, I'm kind of running it. We have some other people that are, are helping out and, and taking charge in their own way. But we need a brother and a sister that will officially take over as the priest and priestess for the fellowship. So if you feel called, remember, in the fellowship, we are a ground-up organization. I don't go looking for the people. The Lord sends the people to, to me, to us, and then we pray on it. The Bible says in the New Testament that we don't call ourselves, we're called as Aaron was. And how was Aaron called? Well, on the plates of brass, Aaron was eating in Third Moses, and he had a vision, a revelation given to him, telling him that he was called to go and meet his brother Moses. And he just left his family right there. I mean, he didn't just get up and say, not say anything and leave, but he prepared and he left. 
following the Lord's instructions, and went out to Moses. And Moses was told also that Aaron was called. And so it was by the mouth of those two witnesses. Aaron knew, and Moses knew. And that's the way we do it here in the fellowship. When the Lord sends the people to us, we pray and see what the Lord's direction is, to, is, is a witness from the Holy Spirit, that what they receive was from the Holy Spirit, and we're able to move forward with two people knowing that this that individual was called because the Lord told them themselves. They weren't pulled aside and asked to do something. The Lord pulled them aside. I should say, weren't pulled aside by a person. The Lord pulls them aside. So if you feel pulled aside, it doesn't matter if you don't feel good enough. It doesn't matter if you don't feel worthy. The Lord feels that you are worthy. So accept the grace of Jesus Christ. Accept the call and step forward. At this time, I'm going to offer a closing prayer. Elohim Shaddai, we bow our heads before thee at this time. Thank you for all your many blessings. We thank you for those that were sick, that were healed, for those that were jobless, that received jobs, for those that have been struggling and found peace. At this time, we pray to you that those that are still seeking jobs, still seeking employment, will find that those that are sick or afflicted will be healed, and that those that are seeking will find, whether it be here or elsewhere. We ask that you please send us those that you have called to run these Sabbath services and to help out in the fellowship in all the different ways that we need. We thank you for all those that have come and are stepping up and helping. We ask that you please bless us with everything that we stand in need of and that we can move forward in faith. We need sisters. You have called the sisters to organize through the prophetess Christine, through her revelation, and the call is there. We ask humbly that you send these sisters so that they that they, they that shall heed this call from you so that they can move the sisterhood forward. We ask that you please send all those that are suffering from loneliness, isolation, those that know of your goodness but don't know where to fellowship or where their community is. Send them here that we may help them. Whether they stay here or move on to another part of the movement, we want to be their support for you. Please help us to fulfill these roles. As we're moving from the Church to the Kingdom, please help us to understand the difference, to avoid the backbiting and the creeds of men, to seek the spirit of the law, to seek to be those that follow the spirit of the law rather than those that seek to enforce man's interpretation of the words of the law. Help us as we are looking to build a temple that we will find the people that we need and receive the financial resources that we need. Please touch the hearts of those that you have called to give to this movement so that we will have the financial resources that we need to move forward. We thank you for all your blessings. We thank you for all the opportunities you've blessed us with. We need to rebuild the Council of Elders. We need to get our 501c3 C status from the IRS. And we need to help those that feel that they still need a church to be able to build the organization that they need so that we have a way of transitioning from the church to the kingdom. We need the people in place to support those that come to us with these needs. All things in your time. We are so grateful for the blessings you have 
given us thus far, the people you have sent into this movement to help We ask that you please give us the strength that we need to move forward, that we may do so in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. So mote it be. Amen.